to BanjoBenClark.com. I am Banjo Ben. I'm going to teach you a fun mandolin tune today. This is actually one that I wrote this week. I sat down at my mandolin, my computer, one evening this week, and this melody kind of hit me. When I got done with it, I realized that it reminded me of my middle child. Those of you who have middle children out there, you know what I mean. Um, Ellie Mae is our eight-year-old, currently eight years old. And every night after supper, she starts climbing on me. She calls it after supper, climb on daddy time. And she's up and down like, like a pet ferret. And so when I got finished with this melody, I was like, man, that reminds me of, of Ellie Mae. So this is Ellie's hornpipe. I think it's a hornpipe, or I think it classifies as a hornpipe. Regardless, that's what I'm calling it. And we're not only going to learn the melody, we're going to learn the harmony to it, which is really, really fun. So I encourage you to grab another mandolin picker and uh, grab this harmony. It's a fun song. It's a cool way to uh, to brighten your day, I think, and which is the same same thing that Ellie Mae does to me. Let's uh, let's jump into this one. If you're watching here on the site, you've got everything you need, including the MP3 jam tracks and the tabs. If you're watching somewhere else, I'd be honored to have you on board as a Gold Pick member to watch this lesson and hundreds more. The first thing I'm going to teach you is the melody to Ellie's Hornpipe. Then we'll dive into the harmony, and then we'll talk a bit about how to play those together. This is in the key of G. It does have a typical fiddle tune construction where we have an A part that's eight measures long, then we'll repeat that. And then we'll go into a B part that's eight measures and repeats that. And the reason why we call it the A and the B is because typically they have different chord progressions and a little different melody. We're gonna use a lot of the same chords here and we're gonna just change the melody up over those chords, which I think is the beauty of a lot of fiddle tunes. Um, because whenever a melody changes over the same chord progression, it gives those chords a whole new flavor. And that's what we're gonna see here in Ellie's Hornpipe. All right, we do have some triplets throughout, which I think are a lot of fun. And we're gonna to have to break some pick stroke rules to uh, be able to land on the downstrokes that we want to. But here's, we're leading into this song. We're gonna start with some eighth note triplets. And I'm gonna start that with a downstroke. You might be tempted to start with a, or I'm gonna start with an upstroke. You might be tempted to do a down. That would be fine. But if you start with a down, then what happens when we land on the first beat on that fifth fret? We're going to be with, with an upstroke. Now, that's not a big deal right here because it is a quarter note, and we're not having to immediately go into a bunch of eighth note picking. But later on in the B part, we will. So if we don't start the triplets with an upstroke, we're going to end up backwards on our pick strokes from the very beginning. So let's just go ahead, start with an upstroke. <laughs> There's nothing really difficult about this song. I want to talk more about kind of the idea behind the melody. The first part is over, a t or the first two measures are over a G chord. And what they're doing is they're working their way through the G major triad. So if you want to think about the melody doing that. That's what the melody is doing. Whenever I fill it in, it sounds like this. Okay. Now the second uh, two measures over the A minor and the D chord, we're going to do this, I just call it a falling scale. This is what really reminded me of Ellie Mae as she tumbles off my shoulders. But we're gonna start with a C note there and we're gonna come down the scale like, like we're walking down a ladder. It sounds like this, measure five. I think you hear the pattern that's happening there and it's pretty easy to remember. It's easy to memorize. And uh, it's fun to improvise over too. Let's play this first line all together again. One, two, three. I'm going to have a little bit of repeating here in the next line. We'll do that little falling ladder scale again for a bit. So we get to measure 10, and then we'll wrap it up. And at that point, we're going to repeat. We're going to go back to the top and play that A part again. Now, normally whenever I play fiddle tunes, I will play a variation the second time through an A part or the second time through a B part. This one, I'm using repeat signs, and we're going to play the same thing two times in a row. Reason why I do that is because we have the harmony coming in, and I wanted to do another video later where we do some variations and some improvisations over this melody. For now, I just want to work on getting that melody down. You want to play it all the way through again? All the A part? Remember, you can speed up or slow down this video. Play along with me. One, two, three. We'll 
repeat. And when we repeat and we get to the end of that second time through the A part, we're going to climb up to the B part. And it's in that um, in the next video that I want to teach you the B part, which is really built off of a pen, falling pentatonic scale. And uh, that we've heard a lot, actually, from one of our favorite guitar players. We'll talk about that when we get there, and then we'll also learn the harmony and talk about putting them together. If you're watching somewhere else besides BanjoBenClark.com, I'd be honored to have you on board. Come on over, download those tabs. I've got the Jamtrack MP3s that has both the harmony and without the harmony, so you can play harmony to me, or you can have me play harmony to you. Let's get going.